All right, everyone, you know what this is about. This is um, your chance, our chance, to sit here and talk about a choke job that nobody ever saw coming. No one saw this coming. No one. In fact, I'm going to say some words that I never thought I would ever say. Thank God for the New York Jets. I never thought I would ever say that. Because without them winning last yesterday against Pittsburgh, that would have been an awful sports day. And it was bad enough as it is because the New York Mets choke on the National League, National League East title. For six months, we, we, we thought, hoped, watched, smiled, enjoyed baseball for six months as the New York Mets were, in many ways, at many different points throughout the course of the season, one of the best teams in baseball. Right up there with the Dodgers, right up there with the Astros, right up there with the Yankees. We saw this team beat teams like those teams, beat teams like the Dodgers, win a series against them both in, uh, at City Field and split it in L.A. We saw them sweep the Yankees at Yankee at, at, at City Field, rather. We saw them sweep the Yankees at City Field. We saw them earlier in the year beat the Atlanta Braves. But lo and behold, at the end of the day, it was just another tease. Yes, this team is going to the playoffs. We got a whole postseason to get through. Mets have, will have an opportunity at best of three at home against most likely the San Diego Padres to advance to the division series. It is going to be a much tougher, much more securitous route to get to potentially a World Series for the New York Mets. Can they still get there? Can they still get to an LCS and maybe one day find themselves back in Atlanta with another shot at the Braves? Absolutely. Absolutely they could. But right now, it doesn't feel likely. Right now, it feels like this season has started to, to take a nosedive in a direction that really nobody ever thought, no, no one thought would be possible. There were signs. Of course, there were signs throughout the course of the year that there was some trouble ahead. And I think that all got exposed, and I think we all agree, I think a lot of Mets fans agree, all of the problems that were laying in the weeds all got exposed in those in this three-game sweep the Mets had at the hands of the Atlanta Braves, who are now two games up on the Mets in the NL East. The division, for all intents and purposes, is over. The only way the Mets were to it, it were could, could win the division is if they were to sweep Washington to the, and for the Braves to get swept by Miami. That's not going to happen. So the Mets have to go through the wild card to get there. One of the many problems the Mets had in this series, one, they didn't hit. Didn't hit at all in this series. And I thought coming into the series that maybe the things were starting to turn around. The Mets showed some life in Oakland. Not the case. Hit only 236 in their last uh, last seven days. And what was most alarming, of course, was that these guys, the guys they needed to hit, especially in the series, didn't hit and didn't deliver. Francisco Lindor, no RBIs in this series. Pete Alonso, only one home run, three RBIs in the last seven days, hit 222. Mark Cannon hit only 158 in the last seven days. Uh, let's see here who else. You know, outside Jeff McNeil and Eduardo Escobar, nobody hit the baseball. Nobody. Nobody get on. Nobody moved runners. Along. Nobody could move runners along. The Mets left nine men on base yesterday. They had 11 hits, and they left nine men on base in Sunday's 5-3 loss to the Atlanta Braves. Of course, a big problem for the Mets in this series and of late is the fact that there is no there was no Starling Marte. Marte has been out for several weeks now with a hand injury, finger injury. The Mets really missed Marte in this lineup. I mean, the guy provides a lot of energy. You see it on the field. You see it in the dugout. The guys love having him on the field. Uh, not to mention, he was always very, very clutch. Always found ways to get big hits in big spots during the regular season. And he was missed. He was definitely missed down the stretch here in the regular season. Absolutely missed here in this series against the Atlanta Braves. Mets wish they could have had him. He probably could have been a difference maker on the field out there. Uh, 16 home runs, 63 RBIs, hit around 300, 292. Very good glove in right field. He was sorely missed. That cannot be overlooked at all when you look at how things kind of fell apart for the Mets as far as clinching the division is concerned here. Not to mention this entire, not, not to mention this entire season, we had seen the Mets struggle with the DH role all year and even catcher for that matter. And they really didn't 
truly address that. Of course, we had the rumors at the time, hey, maybe the Mets would go in all in for Juan Soto, which would have meant them, you know, giving up a lot of prospects. And we knew that deal was probably going to be, you know, pie in the sky anyway. But still, the, there were other deals to be made, and the Mets didn't make any big deals. They did make some small moves, which for a short period of time, especially with Daniel Vogelbach, looked like maybe they could get away with it. But at the end of the day, they couldn't get away with it. They couldn't at all. Vogelbach, probably the better of the three players they acquired, had his ups, had a lot of downs. Had some ups, had a lot of downs. Uh, Tyler Naquin had moments, but again in this series against Atlanta, couldn't get the big hit in the big spot like he did on like he was in a position to do on Friday night. And Darren Ruff, don't even get me started. Didn't even couldn't even contribute to the team to the point that the Mets had to call Vientos and Francisco Alvarez up from the minor leagues. Probably not even ready to contribute in a tough spot in a playoff race, pennant race, and asking him to contribute big hits. Alvarez had a tough couple of days, 0 for 8, with the Mets to start his career. So that was asking a lot of those two rookie rookies to come up in the basically in the last couple of weeks in the heat of a pennant race to try to deliver the way they did in the minor leagues. That's a tough spot to put the kids in. And then you go into the pitching. And this was a team that was built on pitching all year. Scherzer, DeGrom, we've heard, we've talked about this all season long. If the Mets were going to, as far as the Mets could go this year, it was going to depend on their starting pitching. And unfortunately for them, you started to see some cracks, and then it just kind of imploded during the weekend. Jacob DeGrom giving up. Four earned, four giving up three earned runs, three home runs, and a start on Friday night. Max Scherzer giving up four earned runs and nine hits in five and two thirds on Saturday night, and then Chris Bassett had no answers, giving up four earned runs himself in two and two thirds innings. The three guys that have been who have been the most consistent starting pitchers for the Mets, the three big guys at the top of that rotation, couldn't get the job done, and the Mets had the rotation lined up exactly the way they wanted it. DeGrom, Scherzer, Bassett couldn't get that one win they needed. Couldn't get it. That's what's so so, so frustrating for the Met fan. That's what's so deflating for the Met fan. They couldn't hit, and the guys they had up there, the pitchers that you banked, that the Mets had banked on all year to be there, unfortunately, couldn't get the job done. And that's what it comes down to. Now, I think DeGrom of the three starting pitchers is the most concerning because his last four starts, 14 earned runs in 21 innings pitched. That's the most concerning. He is, of course, there's been the story that he has had a blister prone on his hand. Of course, now, you know, coming back off of injury this year. Is he the, still the same pitcher at this point? That's a big question right now. And I think that we have to start asking questions as we move in whether – the season continues deep into October or it ends at the end of this weekend against San Diego. The question is going to be is, what is this Mets starting rotation going to look like moving forward? Jacob DeGrom is rumored to be uh, interested in opting out of his contract. Do the Mets want to go big or go home in a deal for Jacob DeGrom at this point? That's now a big question. Do they want to pay him big money? especially after spending $40 million a year on Max Scherzer. So these are now questions that you have to start thinking about now as you look at this team, not just for the rest of this postseason, but now moving forward into next year. So they were flawed from that standpoint. You can you want to throw the general manager, Billy Epler, in front office under the bus for not making the big moves, not making another move to get another pitch in here, not making another move to get a big, legitimate DH in here. You certainly can do that, and I can understand that because – they needed hitting, they didn't get it. They needed some bullpen help, didn't get it. But at the end of the day, they had the three best their three top starters and they couldn't get the job done. And that's what's so disheartening about this whole thing. And another big problem that the Mets had this year, and the reason they couldn't put this division away, they lost too many games. Too many games to teams they should have beaten. Getting swept by the Chicago Cubs was inexcusable. Losing a, a, a game to the Pittsburgh Pirates, inexcusable. Losing two games to Washington, inexcusable. Losing to Miami after that great road trip in Milwaukee and Oakland. Losing to Miami to start the ball rolling here 
just a couple of days before you traveled down to Atlanta doesn't help. The Mets didn't do themselves any favors. Tip your caps to the Atlanta Braves because the Atlanta Braves have played great baseball for a better part of the last three and a half months. They were, let's see here, what were they, 70, 75 and 36 or something like that since the start of June? Some kind of crazy number. They have been spectacular. Give them a lot of credit. They're the defending World Series champions. They have a lineup full of killers in that lineup from Austin Riley to Marcelo Zuna to Michael Harris. You go up and down their lineup. They know how to hit in the clutch. Dansby Swanson, who killed the Mets in this series with three home runs against each of the Mets' starting pitchers, tipped your cap to them because they earned it. The Mets could have put this thing away at many different times and unfortunately just couldn't get the job done at the end of the day. And now we've got to wait and see what happens against San Diego. And right now, if you had to ask me, my guess is the Mets are probably going to lose to San Diego. The Padres took five out of seven against the Mets during the regular season. They got good pitchers as well, like you Darvish and Blake Snell. And you know, they got a whole bunch of big-time starters there. Of course, they got Juan Soto in the middle of that lineup. And you got Manny Machado in the middle of the lineup. It's going to be a tough series. It's going to be a tough, the tough three-game series that the Mets are going to face next weekend. And as I said, this doesn't mean the Mets they can't make can't make a move in the postseason and turn what has what looks like a pumpkin into a chariot again. But it's going to be asking a lot. It's asking a lot because now you're going to have to go to if the Mets do win in San Diego, win with San Diego, they'll have to go to L.A to take on the Dodgers in the division series, and then potentially see the Braves again. And yes, if you're a Mets fan, you want to have an opportunity to see the Braves again after what happened this weekend, but let's be real. Is it going to happen with the way things are going right now, with a team that right now doesn't hit, can't pitch, has issues at catcher, issues at DH, outside of Edwin Diaz, you have question marks already about that bullpen right now, doesn't look good. It just doesn't look like it's going to happen. That's unfortunate because it looked so promising this year. It looked like this was going to be a team that would do something this year. Maybe it would get to an NLCS. World Series, yeah, that would have been great, but let's let's just be honest with us. At least get to an NLCS in the second year of Steve Cohen's ownership of this team. So I think there's a lot to be learned from the fr- for the front office, for Buck Showalter, for Bill Epler, for Steve Cohen moving forward. Whoever they bring in as well for the, be the new team president to take over for Sandy Alderson. There's a lot to be learned from this collapse at the end of the year. So you know what to do, folks. Again, comment below. Tell me what you think. Leave your thoughts and uh, your comments as the Mets can't get the job done on the division title. 